Yo guys, what's up? Gimsor here, and I'm happy to tell you that LTK is still here and very much alive. If you're a big Lashing Tail Kick fan like me, I hope this makes you happy so you don't have to run Tempest Rush or Wave of Light. Uh, this is a T13 speed farming variant, so let's dive into it. I'll show you the gear, what stats you need on the gear, yada yada yada, and hopefully get you on your way in Season 12 as quickly as possible. Let me take out my handy dandy toothpick here so I don't slur. All right, so first of all, we are still utilizing Sun Wuko. We're being going to be running five pieces, and the sixth piece will be made up by Ring of Grandeur. But for the five pieces, you will be wearing shoulders, gloves, chest, pants, and amulet. You'll be utilizing Gianna Nakashu for your helmet, Nemesis Bracers for your bracers, a gold wrap for your belt, a Ring of Royal Grandeur, Obsidian Ring of the Zodiac, um, an Ingeum, Vengeful Wind, and River of Dancers. Um, as far as the cube, you'll be running Avarice Band, uh, the Laws of Seth, and Scarbringer. Since Scarbringer got reworked, um, I think it used to be 250 to 300% damage. Now it's increased all the way this patch up to 600%. Um, it's best to put this in the cube to make sure you get the full 600% out of it. That will change, of course, if you'd find a primal Scarbringer. Uh, then you could put, um, say, the, the Vengeful Wind in there. Um, with that being said, let's kind of go over the gear and what it does and why it's important. In Geom, as all of you know, um, after you kill an Elite Pack, uh, your cooldowns are reduced by a set amount for 15 seconds. This is huge for keeping Blinding Flash up. Um, Epiphany and uh, using Dashing Strike as well for mobility. Um, Vengeful Wind. This is huge for the uh, stacks of Sweeping Wind, as you see down there in the bottom. Increases by 7. The stats can roll 6 to 7 on here, so one stack's not huge, but it can make a little bit of a difference. And we'll go to, we'll break that down here in just a little bit. Um, for the boots, River Dancers. Uh, these are going to be increasing your Lashing Tail Kick damage as well. Um, Nemesis, we all know what these do. You hit a pylon, Elite comes out, you kill the Elite. Progress Globes, proc your Enjom, yada, yada, yada. Gold Wrap, since we're going to be running Avarice Band and Boon of the Hoarder, you're going to be picking up gold at an alarming rate and increasing your armor to go along with it so you will never die. And that's it, other than the Sun Wuko pieces. So, basically, um... We'll go over the uh, skills here, and then we'll go over the, the armor, what stats you want, and how kind of go over how everything synergizes. So for the build that I'm running here, we're going to be running Lashing Tail Kick, Spinning Flame Kick. This one doesn't do the most damage out of the fire skills, but I like it because it has more area of effect in my opinion. Um, sweeping Wind here, Inner Storm. This is for um, building your stacks up. And... Um, Inner Storm uh, re re uh, restores your spirit. Uh, Blinding Flash um, with Faith in the Light. This is restoring spirit, as well as with the rune Faith in Light, you deal 29% increased damage for three seconds after using Blinding Flash. Epiphany Ascendance. Um, that should not actually be that. Um, you could run uh, whatever Epiphany you really want. Uh, a lot of people can run Desert Shroud, but you don't really need the survivability. Um, so actually, any of these um, are viable options, in my opinion. Um, I, I say run, run uh, Insight, in my opinion, uh, since you don't really need any of the others. Um, with that being said, I can go ahead and change that. Uh, insight, there we go. Um, Dashing Strike, Radiance. Um, once you get your NGM procs, uh, Dashing Strike basically has no cooldown, so you will be able to spam, 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 get to your next set of mobs or your elite really, really fast. And Radiance increases your attack speed after using it. Um, I have utilized and incorporated Cyclone Strike into this build uh, simply because um, since this is completely opposite in terms of like the Wave of Light build where it scatters, it has a huge area of effect, Lashing Tail Kick doesn't have a very big area of effect, so Cyclone Strike is nice to be able to pull those monsters to you so you can kill them extremely quick and uh, you know clear the density. 
As far as passives here, I'm running Beacon, Seize the Initiative, Momentum, and Exalted Soul. And then as far as the gear goes, um, both weapons, I am running um, Resource Cost Reduction, um, which actually uh, cooldown is fine as well. Um, basically, Resource Cost Reduction or cooldown on both weapons is fine, and then having Percent Damage and Dexterity is fine. Um, River of Dancers, you want to have ideally Dex, Vite, All Res, and then Lashing Tail Kick damage. Uh, for Pants, Dex, Vite, Armor, and Secondary Resist is fine, or Dex, Vite, All Res. Since we are utilizing Gold Wrap and the Boon of the Hoarder combo, you will be have enough toughness that your survivability you know, rolls on your gear aren't going to be that huge. So anything with Dexterity, with you know the highest amount of Dexterity possible is fine. Uh, Obsidian Ring of the Zodiac, you'll be rolling resource costs off, and you will have attack speed, crit chance, cooldown. Um, as far as Ring of Grandeur, um, same thing. Anything crit crit, or you could have uh, attack speed, crit crit, area damage, crit crit, dexterity, crit crit. Just anything as long as it has crit chance, crit damage. Um, your Gold Wrap, anything is pretty much fine here. Just try to get the highest amount of dexterity possible. Uh, Nemesis Bracers, uh, since our Lashing Tail Kick will be fire, you want fire skills, high dexterity, and high crit chance. Uh, as for the chests, once again, survivability rolls aren't huge because you're going to be pretty much immune to everything with so much toughness that you're going to get from your gold wrap. So just try to get the most uh, dexterity out of it as possible. Uh, gloves, anything crit chance, crit damage is fine. As you see here, I have dexterity, attack speed, crit chance, crit damage. Um, so anything crit crit is fine, so you could have dexterity, crit crit area damage, or you could even go all out roll dexterity off and have attack speed, crit chance, crit damage, area damage. For your amulet, uh, once again, you want to stack fire damage where you can get it, so ideally you'd want fire damage, crit chance, crit damage. For your helmet, dex, vite, crit chance, and then um, the lashing tail kick damage on there, the higher the better, but you can't re-roll that, so it's whatever you get when it drops. So you're just looking for one with the highest roll. And then for your shoulders, um, these are all rolled for another build that I was running. Um, so resource cost is fine, but try to get cooldown here. So dex vite, um, area damage, cooldown would be ideal here. So with that being said, um, the gems you're going to be running uh, legendary-wise are Boon of the Hoarder. You want to try to get that max at 50. Um, Bane of the Trapped, and um, Gogaka Swiftness. And uh, the way your survivability is working, um, for those of you that don't know, with Avarice Band, um, each time you pick up gold, you increase your pickup radius by one yard for 10 seconds, and this stacks up to 30 times. Since you are going to be running Boon of the Hoarder, at max rank, uh, anytime you kill an enemy, um, you, it explodes in gold. So 100% chance at rank 50, and on top of that, you gain 30% increased movement speed for two seconds. Well, since you're always picking up gold, your avarice band is going to be constantly maxed out at 30 yards. So what this helps with is no longer do you have to stop to pick up your progression globes, health globes, and things of that, like that. So that's why that works out. And on top of that, since you're always getting gold from every enemy you're killing, gold wrap is a nice little substitute here, um, especially at lower paragons, for survivability. Uh, since you're constantly going to be picking up gold, it's going to be stacking with your armor from the spelt, and you're literally going to take no damage. Um, so basically, uh, a, a real rundown of the way the build works, it's going to be the same pretty much as your other LTK monks. When you first enter the rift, you're going to activate your sweeping wind, and then as soon as you start attacking, um, as soon as you start critting on mobs, that will grow up to 10 stacks as long as you keep attacking. Other than that, it's using Blinding Flash as often as you can to maintain um, the buff and to give you spirit back, and keeping up Epiphany. Other than that, uh, it's just dashing to a group of mobs or elites, get their Cyclone, kill, or, you know, Lashing Tail Kick, kill. Once you proc your NGM from the Elite Pack, move on to the next pack. That's all there is to it. So let's give you guys a little uh, run here, and then we'll be on our way. So start right off with the pylon. All right, sounds good. So once NGM's proc, now I can just run, 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 try to find my next elite pack. So this is all dashing strike with NGM proc. And it looks as though I have found the most empty uh, prison 
I have ever seen. Uh, but that's all right. You'll still get an idea of what the build can do. Ideally, you are elite hunting and um, big packs of density hunting. Um, and as you can see, any elite pack you come across is going to die in pretty much one or two hits. You don't have to worry about survivability as your uh, gold wrap is proccing the, from the gold that you're picking up. As you can see there, I'm at 13 billion toughness. And, oh man, this is brutal. I've never seen uh, this map this, uh, this empty. <laughs> Hopefully it doesn't stay like this in live once uh, the patch goes live. But as I stated before, you are simply trying to hop elite to elite. Uh, elite density is great, uh, especially running the average band with your pickup radius. You know, um, so you're snagging those globes and getting progression really, really fast. And ideally, you want to be out of these rifts. And um, the average is going to be anywhere between a minute and a half to at the absolute most with the crappiest rift, maybe three minutes. Um, with this, uh, this rift not being very dense, it's, uh, as you can see, it's kind of affecting the clear time. But, I mean, that's just a one-off rift. They're not all going to be like this. So. so, like I said, elite to elite. Kill the dense As soon as you kill them, just hop. Try to find some density or your next elite pack. And then, um, you know, you'll be good to go. And you don't really have to worry about any survivability issues other than when you first get in the rift. Uh, due to simply you haven't picked up any gold. But once you start picking up gold, you have, you're going to have no survivability issues. Just like that, the Rift Guardian's dead, and you can be on your merry way to your next Rift. Um, like I said, I think this is going to be up there with the um, the fastest clearing monk build for T13 speeds. Um, Wave of Light has its time or its moments where it shines, and so does the Tempest Rush. But I think in overall consistency, uh, if you want to actually have a build where you got you're more into playing it. This is going to be the build that actually clears a little bit faster. But with that being said, like I mentioned in my other videos, Wave of Light and uh, Tempe like the Tempest Rush build especially, that's a lazy man's build. You literally got to pretty much hold down one button, and that's all there is to it. Whereas this, you know, you're lashing tail kick, uh, you're dashing around, you're, you're using Cyclone Strike, there's more to it. So this is going to be, in my opinion, more for your, your skilled, dedicated players that, um, and when played right, I think it's going to yield faster results and riffs. So... With that being said, guys, I'm going to conclude this guide. If you have any questions and you're on Diablo fans, post some comments down in the section below on Diablo fans. Same thing with YouTube. Post comments down below if you have any questions or if you have any ideas that you'd like to change about this, and I'll look over them. Um, with that being said, uh, I will be streaming this season as much as I can at twitch.tv slash gaming. You can find me, of course, on YouTube at youtube.com slash gaming, and my Twitter is twitter.com slash gaming. So... I hope you guys have a great time this season, and if you have any questions, you know, always feel free to ask. That's what I'm here for. I want to try to help the community as much as possible. So with that being said, guys, I hope you have a great time this season, and until next video, peace.